Hi everyone. This video is going to be uh, me running problems related to informal fallacies from the first part of um, chapter three. So number one here, we should get a uh, we should give the job to Frank. Frank has six hungry children to feed and his wife desperately needs an operation to save her eyesight. Pause the video, uh, try to answer this question yourself. So after I read the question, pause it, and I will just jump into the uh, answers. Um, so this is an example of an argument from pity. Uh, which is an informal form where you claim that somebody des deserves something merely because uh, you feel bad for them or somebody tries to make you believe that you should do something or believe something about them merely because of their dire straits. So just because Frank has 600 hungry children to feed doesn't mean we should give him the job. We should give, only give job, Frank the job based on the merits, um, his knowledge, his skills, uh, the way he interacts with other employees, his leadership capabilities, all of those things, not just merely because he has um, a family that is in bad shape. Next one, Erica Evans takes orders at the local Taco Bell. She argues persuasively in favor of increasing the minimum wage. But this is exactly what you would expect. Erica has paid the minimum wage, and if the minimum wage is increased, then her own salary will go up. Obviously, Erica's arguments are worthless, so what is the answer to this one? This is the ad hominem. This is an ad hominem argument to the person, to the man, but we can say person now, to the, to the person. Um, and this is the specific form called the ad hominem circumstantial. So what this person is saying is because of Erica's circumstances, that's the only reason why she's arguing for this. Hence, she's being in some sense a hypocrite, not really a hypocrite, but uh, an advocate crit, <laughs> uh, and therefore her argument is meaningless. That's not true at all. Uh, just because somebody has an interest in making an argument or in the outcome of an argument doesn't mean that you can uh, just diminish their argument by saying that they have that interest. Uh, in fact, most people, when they do create arguments, they try to present positions for in which they have interests, and that doesn't uh, detract from their argument. Now, uh, there is a, a unique, there are unique cases. So for example, if you said Justin Harrison's a politician, he is supported by the GOP. He took, uh, you know, uh, $200,000 in campaign money from the NRA. There's, there's no, uh, that's the reason why he made the anti gun law video that he did in his campaign. That would not be ad hominem circumstantial. Um, so there are situations where when people, uh, when they do have connections to the issue through other things, in fact, um, you can use that argument against them or you can use that to point out um, hip in, a sense that, in a sense that they're a hypocrite or at the very least inconsistencies in their positions. All right, number three, uh, pause the video and let you read that. The answer to number three is red herring. All right, let's see here. So the school board is arguing that the schools are in desperate need of repair, but the real reason our students are falling behind is that they spend too much time on their smartphones. And you can see that um, the ultimate conclusion of this is that the author is saying that you, parents should confiscate their kids' smartphones. So here, the red herring is when you drag a, a smelly fish. So supposedly black, back in the day, um, when they were training bloodhounds to follow a trail, what they would do is they would take a herring fish, which was a stinky fish, and they would drag it across the trail in multiple directions to try to get the dogs from following the trail of, let's say, the person that they're following by smelling a piece of their clothing or whatever, um, or a fox or something like that. And they would try to get them to follow the fish, the stinky fish. And here the stinky fish is the smartphones. The issue here but that the school board brings up is that the schools are in need of repair. That has nothing to do with um, smartphones at all. And so there's a hijacking here. The author has hijacked the conversation to talk about something they care about, which is smartphones. 
So they've drugged the stinky fish, which is the red herring across the way. Number four, whoever thrusts a knife into another person should be arrested, but surgeons thrust knives into people when they're operating, therefore surgeons should be arrested. Pause the video if you wanna answer it yourself. This is the fallacy of accident, where you apply a general rule to uh, a non-relevant case. In this case, we all agree that if you stab someone, uh, it is a crime and, and should be punished accordingly. Um, but there is a difference between stabbing someone against their will and, uh, and uh, a surgeon engaging in a very delicate procedure that the person enters into under his or her own volition with the goal of, of uh, uh, increasing the health and wellness of the, of the person. Therefore, that rule should, the rule of being arrested when you stab somebody should not apply. Therefore, this is the fallacy of accident. Number five. You should read Irving Stone's latest novel right away. It sold over a million copies and practically everyone in the Manhattan cocktail circuit is talking about it. All right, what do you think that is? That is appeal to popularity. Appeal to popularity. And so just because a book has sold over a million copies doesn't mean it's a really great book. And just because people from Manhattan who like to drink cocktails like it doesn't mean that it's good. Remember that when you read The New Yorker, although there are really good articles in The New Yorker and things like that. Um, <clears throat> but just because hoity-toity people like something doesn't mean that it's good. Um, and, you know, we can all think of examples of really bad things um, that millions of people absolutely enjoy doing. Um, so, for example, I would say um, Miley Cyrus is an example, or uh, Don't don't Shoot Me Coldplay. Um, millions of people love uh, the music that those people create. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's good. Now, of course, t uh, musical taste is not as, uh, as objective as uh, perhaps some, some other forms, art forms or some other things that we could all talk about. Uh, and so you could definitely come against me and say like, well, you don't understand that Miley is amazing. Um, <laughs> and there's really nothing I could do except, uh, well, we could go down some rabbit holes there. But anyway, you get the point. Just because a bunch of people like something doesn't mean uh, that it's true. Just because a lot of people do things the same way doesn't mean that it's the best way to do it. Number six, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche's philosophy is not worth the paper it's printed on, false. Nietzsche was an immoral reprobate who went completely insane from syphilis before he died. This is another ad hominem. This form is called the ad hominem abusive. Um, in order to critique Nietzsche's writing, one would need to examine Nietzsche's writing and make claims about it. Here, the person just says that he was immoral and that he, he died uh, uh, insane from syphilis, implying you know, that he was sexually immoral as well. You get you know, syphilis from, from sex. Um, and in the past, it was often from sex with prostitutes and things like that. Uh, but anyway, this is, a, this is an ad hominem abusive um, if you really think Nietzsche's philosophy is not worth anything, then you need to explain why his philosophy is not, not that he was a bad dude. And by the way, he wasn't really a bad dude at all. Um, uh, he did, he did have syphilis, advanced stages of syphilis. Uh, it's unclear whether or not he went insane because of that or some other reasons. But when he was a child and growing up through high school, actually, they called him little Jesus. Um, you know, even though he ended up being uh, one of the greatest atheistic philosophers, probably maybe the, the greatest philosopher, atheistic philosopher <clears throat> or proponent of atheism. Um, he wrote like a three page letter to his mom uh, begging for her forgiveness after he got drunk once when he went away to college. And he uh, very rarely, if maybe never drank alcohol again after that. He talks about that Neke Homo, how he only drinks water uh, and strong tea. He says not to drink coffee either. Um, and then finally, he actually went insane. He saw a man whipping a horse, beating a horse to try to get it to move in a square. And the story is that Nietzsche ran up, wrapped his arms around the horse's neck and, and screamed at the man to stop beating the horse 
and then he collapsed um, and didn't really speak much for the final 10 years of his life. Um, so anyway, th those are some counters to the idea that Nietzsche was a really bad dude. <clears throat> um, or maybe he just cared about horses more than humans, but I don't think that's the case either. All right, surely you welcome the opportunity to join our protective organization. Think of all the money you'll lose from broken windows, overturned trucks, and damaged uh, merchandise in the event of your not joining. All right, okay. This is uh, an appeal to fear. Um, the person is trying to get you to believe that you need to join the organization because if you don't, then all these bad things are gonna happen. But notice also that there is um, a little bit of a straw man involved here. Straw man argument is when you um, understate or overstate another person's argument to, uh, to create a weakened form of argument um, uh, and then you attack that form. So they're not really attacking it. It's not really a straw man, but, but here uh, the, these outcomes are so severe that one could just say to this person, you know, like, uh, aren't you generalizing a bit too much here? Like, how can you guarantee that there'll be overturned trucks? I mean, give me a break, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, but the real thing it is, is appeal to fear. All right, let's do one more. Number eight, I'll let you pause the video and read this. So Barrow advocates increased social security benefits for the poor. Um, and here, uh, here we have, I think, a double, again, two things going on. One, um, it's a straw man. So just because Senator Barrow advocates for increased social security benefits doesn't mean that he's this advocate of a, of a very uh, strict form of socialism that the same that was tried in Eastern Europe that, did, that failed. Um, and you'll also notice that at the end, the person says clearly socialism is no good. They've hijacked the conversation. They've drawn a red herring in a certain sense to, to come up to a totally different conclusion that socialism is no good. Um, the original issue here is that, that Senator Barrow advocates increased social security benefits for the poor. This is something you hear a lot. Um, socialism uh, used in a negative sense. Uh, anyway, this is a, probably more technically a, a straw man because um, uh, uh, you know, this is not what the, that Senator Barrow would advocate for. He would probably say something like, well, greater benefits